Hey, and welcome to the lecture. Before we jump into the learning, just a quick reminder to check out the workbooks available on modernoptician.com through the Ultimate Apprentice Optician Study Guide or available on Amazon worldwide. It's the best way to accompany this lecture so that you can fill in the blanks, label the diagrams, do everything all concurrently and elevate your training to the next level. All the links to the workbooks and the website are all in the description down below, so make sure to check it out. Other than that, enjoy today's lesson. All right, our journey has brought us to the lids and lashes. And I gotta tell you, it uh, I struggled a little bit making this lecture, not because the eyelids are terribly uh, complicated, it's because there's so much you could know about the lids and lashes. Um, they're up front and center, right? So they, they, they have a, a few really important functions. They have a, a few different moving parts and a lot of ailments that can affect the lids. Um, and I started thinking, I thought, you know, I don't want to do a 20 minute lecture on lids and lashes because I think it takes away from other things. You know, we, we talked about much more important structures to opticians in the cornea and the lens and the retina and all the things and i didn't want to make it feel like we had to become eyelid experts um however uh it's an important concept i want you to think of here is that you know all the things you learn in this course are going to make you a really good optician uh, if you can learn everything i'm teaching here and, and put into practice you're going to be a real rock star but if you really want to be great you're going to continue to learn on your own too. So the lids are something, I'm gonna go pretty basic on this lecture on the lids. I'm gonna teach you the stuff that's, you know, in my opinion, the most important as an optician. Um, but if you wanna learn more, uh, I encourage that you do more research. And, you know, this is your vocation. You're, you're gonna become an expert. The more you learn, the better it is. So I'm gonna make all the other stuff about the lids more of a self-study thing. I'm gonna teach you the, the, the most important stuff uh, as far as function and a few part, you know, a few, a little bit about the structures so that you really understand how these things work and what they do. But if you wanna be really, if you wanna go in depth, if you find the lids interesting, which you should, cause they're actually one of the more interesting structures of the eye, I definitely encourage you do some more reading because uh, there's lots and lots to learn about the lash, lids and lashes. So let's jump into it and look at what we need to know. So first, here is a diagram of, you know, the side of the eye with the lid, upper lid <clears throat> kind of, uh, you know, going right over it. And we're gonna start labeling this diagram and talking about some of the more important parts. So the lids, they offer protection from excessive light or injury, right? They, if things are bright, they'll allow, you can squint or close them. And if things are flying at your face, uh, they will, uh, involuntarily close, you know, you don't have to think like, oh my God, I better close my eyes. They do it on their own. Uh, and they also maintain lubrication by distributing, distributing the tears over the anterior surface, which we talked about when we were talking about tears and the lacrimal apparatus. This is the most important stuff you need to know, right? If you understand this is what the lids do, you're on the right track. Um, uh, the opening between the two eyelids is called the interpalpebral fissure. The word palpebra or palpebral always refers to eyelids. That's an important thing to understand because you're going to read it in, in different kind of things that you read. Uh, whenever you see the word palpebral or palpebrae, uh, we're, we're talking about eyelids. So the eyelids consist of five main layers. And this is the kind of stuff that, uh, you know, we get into it a little bit deeper and it's not stuff that you have to really stress yourself out about because it's not really going to be necessarily that pertinent, but it's still interesting. Uh, skin on the top, right? <clears throat> and you, I'm sure you assumed that. Uh, it has a subcutaneous tissue, okay, just like we do on the rest of our body where there's skin. There's the orbicularis oculi, which is a muscle, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a few seconds. Uh, the orbital septum and the tarsal plates. And we'll actually going to put one more piece in here, which is not part of the eyelid. It goes through the eyelid is the levator palpebra, which is another muscle, which we'll talk about. Um, and I just wanted to put, give you some landmarks. You'll notice that this is the fornix conjunctiva at, at the junction between the uh, palpebral and the 
Bulbar Conjunctiva, which we already talked about. So we, we are already well versed in that. That's at the bottom of the eyelids and kind of courses around to cover the scleral part of the eye. Um, and there is the superior tarsal muscle as well. So you'll notice there's all these different parts. And like I mentioned earlier, I don't want us to get too deep into this because it's going to draw too much attention to a structure that we don't need to be super expert on at this point. But I do want to talk about, in the next slide, about how some of these things kind of operate. So the orbicularis oculi muscle is responsible for closing and tightening the lids shut. Okay, so one muscle closes the eyelids. The tarsal plates are the primary structure of the eyelids, and they act like scaffolding, uh, which keeps them dense and protective. It is within the plates that the meibomian glands responsible for the tear, tear films oil layer are found. This is important, right? We've talked about already with, we talked about how important tears are. Uh, we need to always remember that those lids contain a meibomian glands, which are a huge part of what we do as opticians, making sure that the refractive surface is healthy and functional. The levator palpebra, remember I said anything palpebra is eyelids, so basically saying the levator eyelid muscle is responsible for opening the lid. So interestingly, where we talked about, you know, think of the iris that we talked about where, you know, one muscle dilates and one muscle constricts uh, in the sphincter muscles. Uh, there's one muscle that closes and one muscle that opens in this particular case. Uh, and <laughs> I guess I didn't have any more things on that slide, um, but we could jump right into the opticianry significance right now um, because uh, let's talk about why it's important. The eyelids lubricate, uh, sorry, eyelids and eye lubrication are closely related. This, this is the stuff I want you to know, right? So we talk, why, how are they closely related? two main reasons because they distribute the, uh, the tears on the eye. They are those windshield wipers that kind of move the tears around and because those mobilian glands are there, which is a huge part of the tear layer producing the oil layer of the tear and it is extremely important. So I definitely want you to remember that about the eyelids. Um, not mentioned in the previous slides, but this is where this stuff comes important. Poor lid health equals major comfort issues. We talked about this a little bit in the previous lecture. I think it was the tier lecture where we talked about lid care and how important it is to general eye health. Um, it's extremely important that those eyelids remain healthy. If we think about one of the purposes being protection, not only protection against blunt force trauma, but also protection against things entering the eye and inevitably things are gonna enter the eye, bacteria, dust, debris, sand, whatever it may be. These lids get a lot of action. They, they, uh, they see a lot of dirty things. It's a little bit irresponsible. And you know, I, that's, that's almost harsh to say because most of us don't clean our eyelids on a daily basis. So I don't wanna insinuate that everyone's irresponsible, but knowing what you know now, it is a little bit irresponsible to assume that they don't need to be cleaned because these things accumulate and they can lead to problems. Problems with eyelids are never fun. One major one that comes to mind is blepharitis. Uh, and if you ever encounter someone with blepharitis, they are not happy. It's not a good time. Blepharitis, of course, is the inflammation of the eyelids, uh, usually due to either bacterial infection, um, can be due to dryness as well, which also has a bacterial infection component to it as well. So anyways, long story short, uh, I wanted you to just, the main thing as an optician is not necessarily understanding all the different parts of the eyelid. It's understanding that those eyelids need to be kept clean. So if you could be an advocate for eyelid cleansing, uh, you are definitely doing your job. Um, Chalazian, hordulum, blepharitis, these are, these are conditions that affect the eyelids. We will talk more in detail about these things when we start going over ocular pathology. However, these are things that you will uh, want to be able to recognize. Chalazium and hordulum are very similar um, and often one causes another uh, where, you know, we're very familiar with styes, right? You've seen styes, you may have had them before. The word hordulum is actually the clinical term for a sty, and that's usually the blockage of a duct or a gland and uh, an inflamed, almost like pimple on the eyelid. A chalazion is a harder mass 
uh, and often is the result after a hordulum passes. And sometimes a Shalazian could just pass on its own. Sometimes it needs to be lanced or excised, uh, cut out from the eyelid. So these are little ailments that, as opticians, you should be familiar with. You won't necessarily have to diagnose saying that's a Shalazian or that's a hordulum, but understanding the you know relevance of them and how they're related is actually uh, very useful as well. So these are things we will touch more on when we go through some of the pathology that can affect the eye. And the most important part when it comes to things like this of the eyelids, we want to know what a normal eyelid looks like, right? Um, and it's pretty easy too. It's pretty easy to see. Uh, you know, we see so many people. We have some of our own. You know what a normal eyelid looks like. When things don't look good, you should always be referring, right? So, um, because the thing is too is that if caught early, things like bacterial, viral, any kind of infection of the eyelid, if caught early, can often be treated topically. Um, you don't want to let it go to a point where it gets real bad, where then we start having issues that may be very difficult to resolve, right? So uh, a big part of our job actually as first line eye care workers, I always use this analogy, I'm going to use it quite often, or not an analogy, but example. Um, being in a retail setting a lot of the times, you're open Saturday, some of us are even open Sundays, right? Um, not really clinic hours usually. So you're going to see a lot of patients that come in with ailments that you don't have access to the doctor in the office or anything because they're probably not there. So you're going to be the num the first person they see a lot of times, being able to recognize that things are not normal, understanding how serious things are, whether or not you should be sending them directly to the emergency room uh, or telling them to book an appointment for Monday morning. These are things that we're going to discuss in more detail, especially when we start going through the different elements and talking specifically about pathology. I'm going to try to help you understand the implications of a lot of these different things and whether or not these things are urgent um, or give you some advice as to how to handle it, not treat it, but handle the situation and understanding how to refer and the urgency of referral. Okay, um, A lot of this stuff will be eyelid, uh, eyelid related because like we mentioned, these are structures that get exposed to a lot of nasty stuff and sometimes end up with problems. Um, so that's it. That's pretty much it. I want to talk about the eyelids. We didn't go into detail about all the muscles, you know, how they function, what part of the nervous system they're attached to, all these different things. Because I don't think this is going to be something that's going to serve you particularly well in the moment when we're trying to learn so much stuff. Let's focus on the stuff that's really important to us at our jobs. Um, eyelids are cool and they're definitely important. However, we just need to know the basics right now. So that does it for eyelids. Let's move on to the next one. All right, let's go.